Happy Valentine's Day, everybody! Welcome to day 14 of February. Fappy February, to be exact. You know what day it is if you know the calendar and you know our uh, stupid Hallmark holidays. Today is officially what is usually known as Valentine's Day. Who are you with today? Are you sitting here watching this, or are you completely ignoring the funky while you're out there, you know, doing things with a significant other that are actually romantic and not unless you're sitting there watching them this video with your significant other in which case double thumbs up to you and thank you for watching um yeah this wasn't really suggest a game that wasn't really suggested to me or anything but i figured since valentine's day is part of the month and i didn't really have anybody suggest one that kind of fall fell in that category i figured i'd look up a game that's kind of a date sim slash valentine game and well i kind of came up with this it's one of those cheap dollar steam games yeah, it was only a dollar. I think it's going to be a pretty bad game, but I did see that possibly there might be some actual gameplay to this game? I guess we're going to find out. Um, yeah, let's just press play and see what happens, because now I'm just more curious than anything else. So let's get lovey-dovey and romantic with it, shall we? What's your name, baby? My name is not Valentine. Nope. 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 It's Funky G, baby. Signing up for a part-time job was never so easy, especially post-holidays. A lot of stores and businesses only hired extra employees during the holiday rush, but now that the holidays were over, there was no need to hire more people for work. Trying to find a job during this time was torture enough. However, when your parents tell you to get off your butt and find a job, you pretty much don't have a choice in the matter. If only life was as easy as it was in simulation games, you could find a job, hang out with friends, and be happy with someone you eventually grow to love for the rest of your life. Sadly, life is not that easy. All right. We'll call you if we think you're the right fit. Thanks for stopping by. That actually scared the shit out of me. I did not know there's voice acting in this game. <laughs> if I'm the right fit? Really? You can't tell if I'm the one from my interview? Jeez. That was the fifth job I had applied for this week. I was good at interviews, but luck seemed to walk right out of the door alongside me each time I was given a chance at employment. Needless to say, I was in a pickle. What am I going to do now? I was certain that I wasn't going to find a job, find anything around town. I thought about looking around the city, but the price of the commute would not have been worth it. I was stuck in a place where nothing was available. Letting out a sigh, I mentally waved my white flag of surrender to life and started to prepare myself for the rant of lifetime from my parents, or the rant of a lifetime from my parents. Until. Uh, hello. Hello. Is this an adorable youth in need of a job? Uh, that's me. Hi. What? Yes, this is Funky G. Who is this? Oh, just a concerned third party. I heard that there was someone going around looking for a job, and I just so happened to have a job opening at my cafe. And how did you get this number? Wait, really? My heart jumped into my throat. This was my chance. However, something seemed off about this. How did this person get my number exactly? Of course. Have you heard of the Pink Lady Cafe? We've recently renovated the place and expanded, so we need more hands on deck. Sounds sweet and everything, but how did you get my number? A cafe, huh? That probably means I'd become a waiter or something like that. Low pay, but it's a job. So, what do you say? Would you like an interview? Bitch, you called me. Don't I get the job already? Absolutely. Excellent. I will schedule you for uh, so that I get to that Netflix series an hour from now. Sounds good. What, what the? Oh, relax! I was contacted by the last person you were interviewed, and they said that you didn't go far. I'm just around the corner, so you can relax and prepare before the interview happens. Oh, so she's like a interview you you interceptor. She's like, hey, did you interview some people today? Can you uh, give me their numbers? <laughs> okay. Awesome! I'll see you then. I can see a stage five flinger already. Love it. Love it. Well, that was really weird. Still, I got one last chance to get a job. I, can look, I can't look a gift horse in the mouth now. It was better than nothing. Taking a deep breath, I looked up at the Pink Lady Cafe and studied as much as I could. Or I looked up the... I didn't look up at it. Anyway, the Pink Lady Cafe. A cafe that opened ten years ago. At least that was an established place. Owned by K? Okay. K who? Does this K not have a last name? What about a first name? What is K supposed to be? Her initial? Whatever, I decided to move on and keep reading. Apparently, the cafe's focus was coffee, sweets, and relaxation. Sure, they offered other things on the menu, but their primary products were baked goods. So this really is a cafe. The decor seems nice. A lot of pink, though. Well, it was called the Pink Lady Cafe for a reason. 
started to make my way to the address listed on the site and continued to read on. As soon as I arrived, I could tell something was off. Uh-oh. Hello. Hello. We'll be right with you. Cool. I was shocked to see no one else in the cafe besides for a guy dressed as a chef sitting at a table and a girl rushing into the kitchen. Trinity, calm down. We'll get the ingredients. Leah, you are not helping. Out! Leah, Trinity, who are these people? Anyway, before I could blink, the girl apparently named Leah came running out in a panic. After getting her breath, bre uh, getting her breathing to slow down, she looked back into the kitchen with a grimace. I told you not to reorganize the pantry. You fucked up! I just wanted to help, that's all. Nah, it's alright, Leah. Trinity's just freaky obsessed with her organization, that's all. She'd even kick out her own brother to reorganize everything. Well, she is your sister, so you'd know best. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, excuse me. Finally, Leah and the waiter f ter finally turned to look at me, taking in the fact that I was waiting. Oh, hello. Can we help you? Uh, yes. I was scheduled for an interview in about a half an hour. At that moment, the waiter and Leah looked at each other in shock. Is this the person? The one Kay told us to test? Test? Wait, test? Sounds about right. Hold on. What do you mean, test? Finally, the pair looked to me and pointed at the entrance to the kitchen. Interview starts in there. Oh, great. It's all yours. What are you talking about? Um, okay. Yep, this was not an ordinary job interview. Pots and pans over here, Oh, hello, please. Trinity. I... There's something about you I think I like, but I'm not exactly sure what it is yet. Let me think for a minute. Anyway. On it. Faster would be better, Joey. Faster would be better, Joey. Don't rush me. Not Quinn, Trinity. I know. Quinn would have done that and made both the coffee and tea in half the time. Get wrecked, bitch. <laughs> I slowly made my way to the kitchen and watched as a chef and a waiter scrambled around the kitchen trying to reorganize the entire room. The girl, Trinity, seemed flustered and was leading the charge, but the guy, Joey, seemed to be very lax to the situation. Done. Next. Hold on. Who are you? Finally, Trinity and Joey turned to me as if as they took notice of the new person in the room. I wasn't exactly dressed like they were, so it was definitely something that hindered their progress if I was in the way. Hi, uh, I was told my interview would be in here? Moment of silence before Joey raised his hands up slightly and shook his head. Trinity, the new person is all yours. Huh? I looked to Trinity as she crossed her arms and examined me intensely. I felt completely stripped under her gaze, but I remained in my spot, unsure of what to do in the first place. Finally, Trinity sighed and gestured to a sealed fridge. Eggs, milk, flour, and butter. Eggs, milk, flour, butter. You got it. What? I watched as she turned and brought out a mixing bowl and a hand mixer. Joey stepped back and leaned back against the counter, watching me curiously. Was this my interview? Okay. Quickly made my way to the fridge and took a look inside. Despite hearing that things were reorganized, the fridge was almost packed in. I wasn't going to find what Trinity asked for. Oh, God. Well... Remember when I said there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a mini game aspect to this, guys? Well, there it is. It's a freaking matching game. Yep, this is happening. It's butter. Wait, what was this? But bag, milk. What an amazing game, guys! I can't wait. I can't wait. This is. This is riveting stuff. Riveting, riveting stuff. I mean, this is on Honey Pop level skill, you know what I'm saying? I can't believe how Honey Pop this is right now. Boom, shakalaka! I briskly returned to Trinity with the ingredients that she needed in hand. I was surprised at how fast I was able to sort through everything and find the exact food items required. Impressed, Trinity stared at me with a slightly pursed and amused lip. Huh. Yeah, that's right. I'm the best matcher you've ever seen. Now maybe if we do it good enough next time, slowly her clothes will start falling off. Is that how that works? Is that how this game works? God, I hope so. Anyway, I mentally patted myself on the shoulder. I knew I was quick to adapt, and this was definitely a show. A, a show. My, this is definitely to show a show. Whatever, a show of my quick reaction skills. Maybe I wouldn't fail this interview after all. Trinity looked to Joey and jerked her head towards the exit lightly. Well then, it's your turn. Take him. Uh, okay. All right, follow me, please. Sure, sure. I looked to Joey as he ushered me for me to follow him. I took in a breath and left the kitchen. Another test? Maybe I'd be even faster at the front of the cafe. All right. I was led out to the front, where Leah and the guy 
I assume to be Quinn, sat at a nearby table. Joey observed them for a moment and moved towards the cashier before gesturing to Quinn and Leah. Take their order and serve them. You got it, dude. I furrowed my eyebrows. Was I not getting going to get a notepad? Joey raised an eyebrow at me, most likely waiting for me to move, but if I knew anything about being a waiter, I was supposed to have something to fill orders on. <laughs> Leah giggled slightly and smiled towards me. They're going to make me learn it by heart, huh? All right. I'll memorize orders. Let's go. We are a notepad-free establishment. Yeah, we got this. Huh? Notepad-free? Meaning that the servers have to memorize their customers' orders. It's to help reduce waste to protect the environment. Okay. That made sense. Even if servers use tablets, we'd have to charge them every time they ran out of power, and I was pretty sure that that would add to the electric bill. Since the cashier line can get pretty long with pickup orders, we have servers who can take orders at the table and booths for customers who are here to stay a while. Okay. Understand now? Got it. I could only nod. It made sense. Still, it made busing tables a little more daunting of an idea. At least this place wasn't entirely huge. I took in a breath, approached the table with a smile as natural as I could muster. What would you two like? <laughs> I'd like a mocha latte with a baked cheesecake slice, please. Black coffee and some tiramisu. Thank you. You got it, dude. Quickly I nodded in some sort of affirmation to the order and rushed over to the counter, ready to spill the order out of my memory. Here we go. Boom! The best matcher of, of the match. You've never matched. You've never seen somebody match things better in your whole life, and you wish that you, I would match things in your life so you wouldn't be so lost all the time because Funky G is the cure to all of your troubles in your life and I will make you 10% more efficient on a daily basis and make sure that you get your cheesecake and tiramisu. I was genuinely surprised at how well I handled myself. I managed to get both orders in and out to the table within a minute. Wow, very impressive. I know. I even impressed myself. Just like the kitchen. Maybe you are the person we need for the Valentine's Day You rush. shut up, Achievement. Oh, you guys can't see the Achievement. There's an Achievement that popped up in the top corner and said, What, like a tard? Bitch, please. You're the one that made the game. Don't fucking patronize me, Achievement. Anyway. I was majorly confused. Were those tests part of my interview? What about the meeting with Kay? A manager? This seemed a bit too convenient to just do stuff to land, then land the job. Before I could speak more, my phone began to buzz. That must be Kay. Did you text her, Joey? Yeah, I let her know the results. Go ahead and pick it up. Trinity, get in here! In a second! Did I do good? Oh, okay. I slowly answered, not expecting what I heard next. Congratulations! You got the job! Oh, sweet. Huh? Wait, huh? I'm sorry, hold on a second. I got the job? How? What about the interview? That was your interview! We don't want to waste time with just questioning people, so we drop them straight into a simulation of work to see how well they hold up. Lo and behold, you pass! I mean, if anything, that makes a lot of sense, if you think about it. Like, are you going to hire somebody based on the bullshit they tell you, or are you going to hire them based on the fact that they can do the job? Let's throw them in and see what happens. That makes a lot of sense to me. Okay, this is weird. So those tests were for the position? I guess, uh... I was really at a loss for words. Kay could only laugh on the other line as the other people around me seemed to be amused at my expression. It's alright! I know we kind of threw you into the deep end really fast, but we had to make sure you were someone we could trust during the Valentine's Day rush! Oh, I can't wait! The Valentine's Day rush? What do you mean? I knew Valentine's Day was big for couples, a big day for couples and the like, but I would not expect cafes to go crazy with customers. Kay, however, seemed to understand my confusion explained further. Well, at the Pink Lady Cafe, we host an annual Valentine's Day rush event where couples can come in for three days and enjoy a small moment of joy in a warm cafe. Oh, it's super romantic, don't you think? Super. I guess? What makes this event super popular is that everything on the menu is half off! And that's the real kicker. Whoa, half off for desserts and coffee? That's a ballsy step for a cafe. The event has gotten so popular that we can barely keep track of ourselves each year. That's why we expanded and we reached out to get more help on board. And now we have you, a magnificent fifth member. Hey, I never said I'm in yet, bitch. Don't fucking, don't, don't fucking assume I'm gonna say yes. Wait, hold on. I didn't say that I... Ah, oh my god. I apologize. I'm going way too fast for my own good. I forgot to ask you if you even wanted the job. So, will you? Yeah, that's right, bitch. You better ask. My head was spinning. I was the extra help for a mega cafe rush? I mean, it made sense, but I would have at least appreciated an explanation before being tested out of the blue. 
Still, from the looks of it, if this event really was a big deal, then the cafe needed all the help it could get, and I need a job. What's the... The payroll? <laughs> You'll be paid $750 for the week of Valentine's Day rush. That sounds pretty neat. Wait, what? $750 for a week of work? For selling products of ha half price? How well, off is How well off is this cafe? At my aghast expression, the people around me started to laugh, probably understanding why I was so shocked. Did she mention the pay? That shocked me too the first time. Well, this cafe's been in good business for a long time now. I'm not surprised at the good pay. So, what do you say now? Only an idiot would have declined the job knowing that pay. I happily accept the job. The group around me cheered, happy at my answer. <laughs> awesome! I'm excited. Since the event starts next week, I'll let the group instruct you on how to get ready. I hope everything works out! <laughs> me too! Before I could question came more, she hung up, leaving my, me in the hands of my new co-workers. Okay, then. So, looks like you have to make a choice, newbie. Oh, God. What kind of choice? Huh? Which section will you be working? In the kitchen with Trandy and Quinn, or up here in the front with me and Leah? Um, uh, do I want to be a waiter or a chef? I mean, I'm not going to lie. If we're going to go with looks, I'm definitely enjoying this one right here, if you know what I'm saying. Even if she does seem kind of bitchy. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, um, anyway, I froze, looking at each one of the employees and thought, and, wait, and thought, I had to choose? I was good with both jobs, but I guess I had to focus on one side to work efficiently. I didn't want to ruin the clockwork of the cafe by doing both. I thought about the people in each section. Trinity and Quinn were obviously the chefs of the cafe, and a third would help. At least someone who could fetch their ingredients and make sure everything was in order. However, Lee and Joey worked in the front, and who knew how many people were going to be needing service come Valentine's Day? I had to weigh out my options. KitchenAid or server? KitchenAid! Eventually, I was given an apron to, fear, to wear for work. Fear for work? Really? Anyway, being that I wasn't a chef like Trinity or Quinn, apparently were, I had to wear at least something cover-wise to be able to handle food. Just for safety, I also, was also required to fill out an examination for a food handling permit. Luckily, Trinity and Quinn knew someone who expedited the process, so I was able to work immediately. So you'll be helping us by getting us our necessary ingredients for orders. We'll need you at the top of your game, so try not to fall behind. You got it, dude, and if it all it requires is me to do a match game, you know I'm the champ at that. Just don't screw up and give us the wrong ingredients or misplace them, okay? If you can do that, we'll be golden. Aye, cool. Right, got it. Quinn and Trinity were obviously very close. I had already overheard from Quinn that they were brother and sister. However, just from how they presented themselves, you could tell vast differences between them. Trinity seemed to be the head of the head chef of the kitchen, focused in her work and unaccepting of anything below perfection. She didn't seem too harsh, as she had a small gentleness in her eyes. But who knew how hard she would be when the rush comes around? Quinn, on the other hand, seemed to be more of Trinity's sous chef instead of her being her partner. He was pretty laid back, but had almost an adorable pep in his step and helped whenever Trinity missed a step or didn't add a finishing touch. A pair of them were awe striking in the kitchen, just watching them prepare a couple of cakes for the next day. So, was the cafe closed today? Yeah. Kay had to leave for some important business trip, and our manager, Naomi, had to fly out to France for a demonstration. I want to meet Naomi. She sounds hot. Whenever we wind up without the owner and the managing supervisor for a period of time, we pretty much close the cafe to prep. Next day, we open, and everything runs smoothly, as if no one was missing at all. I see. Smart. Yeah. Besides, we get paid for the prep day, so it's worth it regardless if we work or not. Sweet. Jeez, you always bring up the paycheck, Trin. Can't you just, like, enjoy the work? Yeah, and the money. Oh, I enjoy the work, but I do have to consider my finances. That's what I'm saying. Gotta get your money, boo-boo. I could see how serious Trinity was compared to, to the relaxed Quinn from a mile away. Was this really just a paycheck for Trinity, or was Quinn just too relaxed for his own good? All right, well, you know me. I'm going to lean toward the girl. Paycheck! Thank you. See, the new sous chef gets it. Oh, I get it. It's important, sure, sure. But I will argue tooth and nail that her work would suck if it was all about the green. Uh-huh. I know you would. Jeez, not even Mom would be able to stop that argument. Uh-huh. You got that right. <laughs> 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 the laughter from both chefs was, was almost infectious. It looked like working here was going to be a lot of fun. It looks like playing match game was going to be super duper. My first day of work was definitely not what I expected. I was asked to go in at 6 a.m. and was scheduled until 8 p.m. later in the day. I can only hope that the rush would not run me over. 6 to 8? That's absurd. That's a 14-hour day. Are you kidding me? That's absurd. When I arrived, there was already a line circling around the block. Holy shit. 
Holy crap! Hey, over here! Around the block? A little step to the alley and I found the back entrance to the cafe. Perfect. Come on! We gotta meet and psych ourselves up! Alright, get psyched, son. Right! Once inside, I was greeted with the anxious energy. I could tell that all four of my coworkers were nervous, but as I knew, as I was the new person, I knew I added a hefty amount of my own into the mix. So, are we ready to open the gates? Let's do it. You make it sound like this is a terrible thing. We got this. It's not terrible more so than it's exhausting. We got this. I'm sure we'll be fine. Just gotta pace ourselves. Yeah, we got this. Despite the fear of the day ahead, with a solid nod from each person, we were ready to go. This panic was not going to do me in, and I had to make sure I pulled my weight. I did not want this event to fail because of a mistake I made. And thus, the event began, and the crowd flooded in. I need eggs, flour, and milk. Alright, you got it. You got it, boo-boo. Uh, aid! Need a little help on the next order, too. Alright, what the fuck do you need? What do you need? Uh, missing sugar, strawberries, and some right, vanilla. Alright, so we gotta mix up six things now. Let's go. On it! Here we go. Boom, boom. <laughs> Shit. We gotta be quicker, dude. Strawberries, eggs. Ah, shit. What was this one again? This was eggs. Okay. No, we didn't find another one of those yet. Strawberry. It was this. No, shit. Strawberry was this. Ah, milk. Milk, milk. Uh, this. I haven't found another one of those yet. Here's one of those. Eggs. Sugar. Eggs. Oh, uh, this. This was it. Ah, uh, shit. Was it one of those? Sugar. Uh, was this? No. That one. We're, we're on our way, dude. Oh, no, that's not milk. Uh, there's the milk. There's the strawberry, and boom, shakalaka, boom, food, what? Thanks. You may have saved this cake. I know I did. I'm a beast, y'all. No time for small talk, Quinn. Sorry, sorry. I'm a master matcher, dude. You don't even know. The day was so chaotic that I was barely able to keep up. I was on my feet for hours until, to our surprise, the cafe rush settled for a small moment, allowing us to chance to breathe. Jesus. How many pastries have we made? A million so billion far? at least. Too many. Too many sweets. This is insanity. Quinn could only laugh in exhausting, exhaustingly as Trinity nodded with a sigh. My body did not want to get back into it again, but I knew that our break would not last long. Luckily, we were in the kitchen, so the customers couldn't see us sprawled out. We would enjoy a breather, even if it was short lived. As Quinn finally stopped laughing, he stretched his arms over his head and yawned. Trinity, however, began to walk to the fridge. I should prep some ingredients. Can't let the aide get too tired nearing the end of our shift. Yup. How insanely thoughtful of you, Trin. <laughs> uh, thank you, Trinity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Trinity continued towards the fridge and began to slowly move ingredients from one, from it to the counter. Uh, Quinn, however, made his way to the corner of the room, lying, laying back against the wall, and yawned once again. I'm gonna help Trinity because I'm a fucking, I'm a fucking knight in shining armor. That's what I am. I didn't want to be useless at the mo that moment in time, so I decided to help. I followed Trinity's lead and helped her bring out the food that might have been might have been needed for the next chaotic wave of customers. Here, let me help. Huh? Uh, thank you. Damn right. I nodded and continued to organize the ingredients on the counter, prepping them for whatever menu item Trinity or Quinn might have needed. As I did, however, I noticed Trinity's focus was almost deadly on the food items in front of her. She really seemed to take her job very seriously. Are you okay, Trinity? Hmm. Oh, I'm fine. I'm just concentrating. As I see. Just concentrating? Trinity nodded, slicing up a couple of strawberries as she replied. I just want to make sure things go smoothly. Can't afford a mistake with baking. Uh-huh. I could not help but smile a bit. You really are dedicated to your craft, aren't you? At that moment, Trinity stopped and looked up at me, taking in what I had said. A slight wave of fear ran through me, nervous that I had somehow insulted her. However, Trinity's lips curled into a slight smile and she nodded. Yeah. I am. I know you are, baby. Even as she went back to cutting strawberries, the smile on her face remained. I guess a small compliment could make anyone's day. Hey, you three all right back there? Oh, we're doing just fine. Huh? Yeah, we're fine. Looks like another wave is coming in. Get ready. Prepare yourselves. Well, looks like break time is over. Here we go. Before we knew it, another storm of people began to pour into the cafe, ordering custom desserts that had, had us both restocking the front and serving customers head-on with personalized orders. The entire process was dizzying, but with me expediting the process of getting ingredients to the chefs, we were pretty speedy with the food. I couldn't even feel time pass by and the day end. Day one closed with us barely having the energy to speak to each other, only able to say our byes for the night. Day two was barely different from the first, 
With the next day being Valentine's Day, a large rush of people piled in, most likely to not get trampled during the bigger holiday. At least my body was getting used to it a little bit. You ready? Oh, I'm ready, baby. Let's I'm sure we'll be fine. We're good, we're good. You said that yesterday. Uh-huh. Hey, we're here, right? We were fine yesterday, too. Save that energy for the crowds. All right, let's go. Hey, can you get the coffee beans out of the pantry? And oil. Coffee and oil, you got it. Okay. Eight, I need butter, milk, water, and sugar. Got it? You got it, baby. We on it. I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm on it. I be on it all night. I be on it day straight up. Pimp, if you want me, you can find me in the A. I'm on it. I'm on it. You don't want no, no, it. none of 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 it. Where all my oil at? Uh, where all my oil at? Uh, gotta hurry up and match. Uh, gotta hurry up and match. Uh, where all that oil at? Uh, where all my milk at? There it is. Milk, butter? Oil? Sugar? I'm lost now. Okay, there's the oil. There's butter. Choc choco latte. Ooh, sugar. Choc choc choc. Nope. There it is. And done. Whew. Thanks. You're welcome. Keep at it. You know it. I was getting the hang of this. Damn right I was. Luckily enough, we were able to get another long break. Trinity spent her time doing prep work, while Quinn fiddled with a pastry on the side. Help a Trinity again! Prep work was important to stay on top of the orders, so it was best to be smart and help Trinity. I stood beside Trinity, cutting some sticks of butter into cubes with for the smaller pastries, while she sifted sugar. The silence, however, was killing me. So how did you become a chef? Huh? Trinity paused to look up at me in confusion before taking in the question and continuing her sifting. Quinn and I both took care of our dad when our mom passed away. We took turns in the kitchen since our dad was pretty much stuck in bed. Sad way to learn, but okay, cool. I'm sorry. It's not as bad as it sounds, I promise. He taught us how to bake, and soon enough, we were both enrolled in culinary school. By that time, our dad got better and was able to take care of himself. Cool. I'm sm I smiled, happy to know that the story had a happy resolution. Trinity continued. We both got through school pretty much at the top of our classes. We got job offerings from all over the world. But Quinn wanted to stay close to home, so he took the chef job here. Okay. What about you? Me? Yeah, you. You're here too. Trinity took a moment to herself, staring at the sifted sugar on the counter and thought. I waited patiently, curious to know why she was working there as well if it wasn't her first choice. <laughs> Maybe I'll tell you more next time. For now, we gotta work. Oh, the mystery. All right. I nodded and cracked my knuckles. We had the rest of the day to go, and we couldn't afford getting lazy. The day was rough, but with the three of us working together, we were able to accomplish what we needed in the kitchen. Bitchin'. Ending the second day of work was somehow much more tiring than the first. Maybe it was because of the workload, or maybe it was because of the tediousness of the job started to get to me. Either way, I had to shake it off and go into the third day. Valentine's Day is here, my friends! Talk about being nervous, I was internally shaken. If the first two days were merely glimpses of the chaos that would occur, then the actual holiday would be a nightmare. I expected and prepared for the worst. No breaks, no time to settle into any form of autopilot mode. I had to be constantly on my toes. At least this was the last day of the event. However, one question lingered. What happens after the event? Orgy? Was this job temporary, or was this going to be a job I got to keep for a while? And the details were never discussed with me, but I guess I had to wait until either Kay, the owner, or Naomi, the manager, was able available to talk about it. At least this week was worth 750 bucks! Hell yeah. The psyche, uh, the psyche? I guess the psych up for the third day seemed a little off. Despite Leah being ha the happy and positive one of the bunch, something about her smile seemed nervous for the day ahead. Probably for the expected crowds. Alright gang, last day of the event. We got this. Oh, we got it. Let's do the best we can. You damn right we will. We can do this. We can relax and celebrate after. Hell yeah, we can. You know what, Leah? You're right. Let's aim to get everything done. Then we can have a little event of our own when we close up. Oh shit, event of our own, you say? We can do that? The group nodded, assuring me that a party was okay to have in the cafe after hours. I felt a little energy rush through me. Excited to celebrate an event well, well done. I can get through this. I knew it. Here we go. Hey, milk, eggs, and sugar. Boom, milk, egg, sugar. You got it. On it. Mind getting some flour for me too, and All some right, so vanilla and We're still doing six matches. Beans. Okay, that's fine. You got it, dude. Okay, Quinn. Consider it done. Zomatic. Uh, 
some sugar that was right there. Beans were there. And I don't think I found another sugar yet, or another that. I did find milk. Eggs here. Was it this? Yeah, okay. Um, okay, there's a sugar. There's the beans. There's the milk. Eggs. Eggs. Flour was here. Yeah. Milk. Done. With time to spare, baby. I made it. I sped the request in the list of items with ease, allowing Trinity and Quinn to focus on restocking the pastries and baking the multitudes of requests asked of them from the front. Both seem grateful, but were obviously more focused on getting their jobs done than sending even a verbal word of praise my way. It was for the best. No point in risking a possible mistake. Alright. Around the end of lunchtime, we finally had a sliver of time to breathe. Trinity, of course, moved to prepare for the next wave. Quinn, on the other hand, made his way to the corner of the kitchen, working on another side project set of pastries. Gonna help Trinity again, dude. I helped Trinity. The prep work she was doing was helping us phenomenally fly through the waves of customers with ease, so every little bit of work counted. I stood beside Trinity and sifted through a flour, while Trinity began to measure out water, oil, and milk into sealable measurable measuring cups. Thank you for helping us. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. I stopped for a moment, looking to Trinity. She sounded insanely sincere, which threw me off a bit from how she usually acted. Still, I was happy to know that she appreciated my help. Absolutely, it's my job to help, after all. Trinity lips curled, curled into a smile. You know, I started out as a kitchen aide. Cool. Really? Yeah. First years at my culinary school were always kitchen aides to the upperclassmen. Sure, the official name is sous chef, but we didn't feel like we were proper sous chefs. Trinity placed her hands on the counter and looked up at the silver lining of the wall, becoming visibly lost in the reflection it gleamed. Back then, we felt like we were running around like chickens with our heads cut off. We complained all the time about the upperclassmen, until it became our turn to be the head chefs. Uh-huh. When that happened, we realized how important it was to appreciate the help you got. I may seem brash or quick to anger in the kitchen, but I know that there's a lot on the line when it comes to cooking for people. So yeah, I'm sorry if my first impressions really burned at you in any way. I focused to get the work done because I know how hard it is to get it right, but you help it make things a lot easier to manage. So thank you. You're welcome. Trinity finally turned to me and waited for my reply. Trinity was hard set and focused when I first met her, but I was glad to go through with this with her. Maybe now that I had gotten close to her, maybe I could learn more about her in time. Mm -hmm. Trinity chuckled and grinned at me. You know, I never did tell you why I didn't come to work here with my brother at first. Yeah, tell me all about it, please. Oh, right, you didn't. Trinity nodded and looked over at Quinn, watching him fiddle with a cake in the corner of the kitchen. Truth is... He's been comparing himself to me for years. When it came to important meals for our scholarships and tests, I would always make the best, and he'd feel so inadequate because of that. When he decided to work here, I decided to move away and work in France in one of the cafes there. But it didn't feel right there. Trinity finished sealing a measuring cup and chuckled a bit. I wound up coming back, living with our dad. When Quinn found out, he got me a job here and insisted on working as my sous chef instead of as the head he was hired to be. Interesting. I know one day he'll prove to himself that he could be head chef. Until then, I pretty much follow his expectation and do the best I can. Every rising star needs an arch nemesis, after all. Why not his older sister? Makes sense. At that moment, I could see a grimace growing on Trinity's face. She wanted her brother to be the head, but from what he, she insinuated, it wasn't possible right now. I placed a hand on her shoulder and gave Trinity a comforting smile. It'll happen eventually. Don't stress out about it. Trinity didn't respond, at least for a moment, before she finally let out a sigh, relaxed, and nodded to me in return with a renewed smile. Right. Hey, next wave is coming up! Here we go! Well, time to get back into it. You ready, Aid? I'm ready, bitch. Anyway, for the time, for the first time, Trinity cracked a smirk in my direction, almost as if she was challenging me. I, however, was up for that challenge, nodding. Absolutely! Bring it, bitch. It was over. It was finally over. After wave upon wave of customers, we tore, away, tore our way through the crowd and managed to feed every person that came in, in with precise ease. Valentine's Day rush had ended, and there were no more customers to deal with after 8 p.m. Each of one of us felt sweet relief as Leah twisted the deadbolt in front of the door and officially locked up. We are now closed. Good work, everyone. Neat. We did it. We did it. <sighs> What a week. What a week indeed. Right? That was a lot. We definitely had more customers than last year. Well, we can thank the biggest face for that. 
Hell yeah. We had a grouped pair of tables together to make a large eating area for us. To sit down and actually be able to fully sink into the chair was absolutely pleasurable. Almost sexually so- whoa. Are we gonna get sexy all of a sudden? To think that I had made it through three days of intense work, the payroll was going to be well worth it. Quinn rushed into the kitchen and brought out a gorgeous pink and soft yellow cake, setting it down between all of us and slicing it up for consumption. I was ecstatic to see pink velvet inside and couldn't wait to eat. You guys are amazing, or were amazing. You too! We couldn't have done this without you! I looked up to see all four of my co-workers looking up at me with genuine smiles. I couldn't help but smile as well. I was happy to help and, if I wanted to keep this job, I'd be able to work with them a little while longer. As I thought of that, my phone began to buzz. Huh? Hello? Hey! I heard you did a fantastic job during the rush! I hope it wasn't too difficult to handle. Nah, I got this. Oh no, everything worked out in the end. Good! Awesome! Alright then! Well, I've already mailed your paycheck, so you should have it by tomorrow. But there is one question that still remains. And that is? Will I, would I continue working there? If the question is if I want to continue working here... Hell yeah, I do! In all honesty, this seemed like a good job to have. The pay was good, the people who worked here were great, and who knows? Maybe I could wind up going far in the future thanks to this job. I was willing to stay a little longer. Everyone around me seemed extremely happy at my answer, eating silently to not disturb my phone call, but grinning from ear to ear. Great! Naomi, the manager, should be returning tomorrow, and she'll be able to work with you to sign the tax papers and stuff. Legalities and all. You know, what's up with that? <laughs> right. Alrighty then. I look forward to seeing you in the cafe. Have a good night. Sure. You too. As I hung up, Leah let out a gigantic cheer, scaring everyone a bit. Yay! We have a new member of the family. Cool. Hold on, we're a family now? I already have one numbskull brother. Killed him. I heard that. Got him. We've always been a family. We work so well together, it only makes sense. I was happy at Leah's excitement, but I was more excited to see what the future would hold. Would I like it here in the long run? Who knew? Still, it was something worth exploring. I assisted Quinn and Trinity in the kitchen as their aide. Since the rush was done, we were able to relax into the job and not stress out so much. We even had time for Trinity to teach me really base, interesting baking tips. Use your weight. It's going to take a while for the dough to really be workable, but if you keep kneading it, it'll mold how you want it. Sweet. Jeez, this is hard. Welcome to the kitchen. <laughs> it was moments like this where I appreciated sticking around and helping Trinity in the cafe. However, there were other moments where I almost feared for my life. Looks like the dough is ready to sit for a bit, so I'll take it. Clean up the counter and wipe the flour from it, okay? Okie day. Will d uh, ah! Bless you. Chew! Flour practically exploded into the air, making a thick cloud of white float from my sneeze. I had to shut my eyes to avoid getting powder in them. Oh shit. Alright. As the cloud of flour finally dissipated, I was left staring at a stunned trinity who was covered in flour splatches. The sight was completely humorous. Pfft. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're interrupting me. I only panicked for a short second, worried that Trinity was going off going to go off on me, but as both of us began to laugh, my worry melted into a relaxed joy. I was slowly seeing a softer and sweeter side of Trinity. One that definitely didn't emit stern, stoic business, and one that I could find myself growing fond of. Who knew where it could take us? Perhaps the Valentine panic was a good panic after all. End. Trinity's laughter. Well then. That was... That was nice. <laughs> that was nice. Well, guys. That was a short and sweet one, wasn't it? I didn't think it was going to be that short, but... That short it was, and that... Did you like that riveting gameplay? Were you on the edges of your seats thinking I wasn't going to be able to complete the matching in time? It was very, very close. I almost ran out of time that one time. Remember that one time? That totally wasn't even, you know, you know that time. Anyways, uh, yeah, I, you know, I kind of felt obligated to, like, find something Valentine related for Valentine's Day. And like I said, nobody really re requested anything specifically that, that related to Valentine's Day. So I looked one up, found this, and here we are at the end um, at least one of the ends I think I'm guessing there's four endings you know one for each person um, but I think I picked the right one I don't think any of them are gonna end anymore you know 
interesting than that. I mean, I'm sure they're all just, you know, slight relationship, friendship style, style things going on in the little, nice little, you know, conversation at the end and boom, that's the end. I mean, there maybe there's a bad ending if you don't particularly go after any one of the people. I don't know. I'm not going to do more of the endings. It's not, it's not worth my time. This is not that kind of game. This was just a, let's see what the hell this is. And, uh, well, it may have not have been a very fappy episode, but at least we got something romantic and valentines -y. So, yeah, that was it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode 14. Fappy February is officially halfway done. We are at the halfway point. How am I doing? Anybody got a quick two-word review in the comments to tell me how I'm doing? Yeah, only two words. Otherwise, it's an invalid review. Just kidding. Um, yeah, I would like to know how you guys are enjoying the month so far. Just, you know, as a normal feedback. Because, yes, I have 14 more of these bitches ready to go. Lined up and going to do them daily until we hit the end of the month. So strap in for the other half of Fappy February. And I will see you guys tomorrow for episode 15. Peace!